Since being elected to the county council as an at-large member in 2018, council member Will Jawando has made his mark as a social justice activist and has often championed police reform efforts. This week, he and council member Kristen Mink introduced the Safety and Traffic Equity and Policing Act, which once again seeks to reform police's use of authority and power. According to political observer Adam Pognuco, Jawando's bill would prohibit many police traffic stops and searches, even if the latter was had been consented to by a driver. Police would be prohibited from stopping vehicles for traffic offenses related to licensing and registration, certificate of title or insurance, window tinting, defective headlights or, head or taillights, illuminated license plates, and minor obstructions on windshields. Police could not stop vehicles for using headlights and not for not using headlights at night, excuse me, and in adverse weather conditions, even though that's mandated by, by state law. Police would also be prohibited from enforcing jaywalking laws. Now, according to a RAND Corporation study, traffic stops are the most prevalent way the police come in contact with the public. And the study points out that the results from unlawful driving supports the need for traffic enforcement, but it recognizes that police traffic stops while needed and, uh, are also confronted by the fact of racial disparities in who the police stop, which make it a flashpoint for those who want to end the practice altogether. And it is seen by many that if police traffic stops were curtailed, it would serve the greater cause of social justice. So Nancy, Jawando's bill uh, states and stated after, in support of his bill that it would end the practice of driving while black syndrome. Yet the RAND survey found that 43% of traffic stops were for speeding, 24 for equipment violations, including the use of a cell phone, 9% for suspicious uh, suspicion of criminal behavior, and only 4% of traffic stops were so-called pretext stops. So is there a need for this type of legislation? Well, I personally don't know Will uh, uh, at all, uh, but I would say that this is a national issue, less a local issue. Uh, obviously, the numbers here don't particularly support it, uh, but in the politically correct department, uh, Will is there, that's for sure. And, you know, in other parts of the country, and if you look at the cases where there have been uh, some of these um, terrible uh, traffic stop related deaths, um, they are, they, they, they arise out of really modest stops. And so that's a question of training and judgment on the uh, part of the officers. Uh, this uh, fall, I understand, uh, the police department announced a whole new training regimen uh, for police officers, which I think is important, the most important part of uh, policing. And so we'll see how, how that works with, with this. Um, obviously the, the bill only applies to modest things. I don't know how often they really do stop. Apparently 4% of the stops are based on these kinds of issues. So it's more of a statement, I think, than, than a reality check. Uh, I've done ride-alongs. I don't know if you people have. I've done a little bit of the police training, and it's important to understand the world from the perspective of the police officers. It's also important, uh, interesting, uh, Will is not on the Public Safety Committee, uh, but new member Kristen Mink is. And I'd be curious as to how um, they're gonna handle this, uh, this in committee, uh, because really um, council members, decision makers need to understand what life is like on the streets from the from the viewpoint of the police officer. Well, I, I want to, you know, I, I didn't put in a, you know, a quote from the uh, Rand, Rand Corporation report about the incidents that you described, Nancy, which, which have led to violence. And oftentimes it comes down to uh, poor training, as you say, but, it's all, but it also pointed, the Rand study also pointed out that there is a greater degree of resistance uh, from the general public uh, towards uh, police authority and obeying police when, when, when stopped. And so that may be another topic that we can explore sometime later, maybe not mm -hmm. in this, this segment, but sometime later as to how the public needs to respond to the police as well. Oh, I, I do want to uh, get into this, Jim, you know, uh, not only according to the, you know, the, the police, the RAND survey, 
said that 87% of police responded they do not support uh, proposals that would reduce the role of police in enforcing traffic stops. I assume you agree with that. Well, I think this bill is terrible, absolutely terrible. What the council is doing is handcuffing the police. Traffic stops are very, very important. Even if they find someone with a, uh, they don't have their license or their license is suspended, the police can inquire through their uh, internet. Why is the license suspended? Did they miss an emissions test? Or are they wanted for murder in Wyoming? They often pick up people wanted in other states, other jurisdictions. Once they make the stop, they can see if there's activity in the car that's suspicious. So even if it's a benign stop, uh, they can find other crimes and other people uh, who may be wanted. So it's an important tool for the police. And uh, no, no traffic stop is benign or innocent. Any, tr any single traffic stop can cause an officer to be killed. So why are we handcuffing the police? I mean, the county council are elected, yes. And, and why, if they're gonna change their policy, wouldn't they do it by executive order quietly? Why tell the public you're not gonna stop them anymore if their license is suspended? Well, that's a good question. And I guess it goes back to the question I was gonna ask Nancy, which is two very powerful unions have come out in opposition uh, to this bill. Uh, you know, you would expect the Fraternal Order of Police to oppose it, but the powerful McGeo uh, union has also come out against the bill. So is this gonna be, live to see the light of day, I guess is the question, Nancy, out of the council. We'll see, you know, uh, McGeo and the FOP, they're gonna argue about anything that affects operations. Uh, so, you know, that's natural standard behavior. Uh, you know, what's interesting is, you know, you see police office, police cars driving around, they're running numbers all the time. They are always running license plate numbers. They're always doing what Jim has alluded to, which is checking people, uh, keeping an eye on uh, these sorts of issues anyways. So, I mean, that function is built into um, how the police operate today. Uh, so again, I think it's, it's um, more of a tempest in a teapot situation than a real life issue. And it's a political statement. Uh, and that's what uh, this council is all about. Well, I'll be interesting. I'll tell you, this is an anecdotal, you know, uh, survey, of course, but the few people that I've discussed this topic with, you know, all are opposed to it. They say, that's crazy. We need the police to be able to make traffic stops. And it'll be interesting to see what the public comments are made on the 14th, I believe, is when the hearings are uh, scheduled for, whether the public comes out in, in opposition to this as strongly as I think they will.